Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. If not, please just type on the chat and uh, we can manage it. But I think everyone uh, can hear me. So uh, hello and welcome to our webinar, Building Responsible Agrobusiness in Mexico with Rainforest Alliance. This is Andrea Garcia. My name is Andrea Garcia. I am the director of enrollment for a uh, for Latin region, and I am delayed. I'm really have this amazing opportunity to present with you, the director Edgar Gonzalez and Gregor. I'm going to introduce them, and then how we are going to proceed with with the presentation. First. They are going to present for you this amazing presentation. And then at the end, please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. Uh, you can type on the chat your questions while they are speaking, right? And at the end, we are going to go through the, those questions and we are going to have uh, a space when we can interact with, with ourselves. So since this webinar is specific, is um, of course is from for Mexico, right? That's why we we are gonna have uh, many students from Mexico, I guess, because of the title, of, for, uh, of course. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna introduce you guys, Edgar Gonzalez Godoy, as the Rainforest Alliances Mexico director. Gonzalez leads a multidisciplinary team to formulate and implement innovative projects that conserve biodiversity but by transforming land use practices. Gonzalez has over 15 years of experience working in community-based forest management, sustainable tourism, rural sustainable development, and clean climate change mitigation and adaptation. He was responsible of the design and implementation of projects funded by International Fund for Agricultural, Agricultural Development, IFA the World Bank, the Global Environmental Facility, F, and Pemex, among others. He has worked for Mexico's Commission National Forest Health, CONAFOR, the Commission National the Areas Naturals Protected, and local NGOs. Gonzalez graduated from the Faculty of Science at the, Univers at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico. And in the other hand, we have Gregora Abadi, is market senior associated at Rainforest Islands, Mexico since March 2019. Avani has a Master of Science from the Engineer Schools of Purpan, Toulouse, I guess I pronounce well, I hope so, France, where he graduated in 2016 in agriculture, agronomy, and food industry. He started his professional career as the agriculture attache, attache of the French Embassy in Mexico in charge of cooperation between both countries and agriculture matters, business development for French agro companies in Mexico, and as a support for sanitary negotiations for the exportations of agricultural goods to Mexico. At Rainforest Alliance, he is in charge of their relations with the private sector, promoting market access for producers, and develop responsible supply chains in Mexico. Thank you guys for this opportunity. Uh, for us, it's a pleasure to have you here. So Edgar or, or Gregor, feel free to start whenever you want. Um, thank you very much, Andrea, and thank you very much uh, to all that are uh, connected to this uh, webinar. As uh, Andrea was saying, we're going to talk about um, the work that we're doing in, in Mexico about building responsibility our business in Mexico with uh, the Rainforest Alliance. But even though we're gonna we're gonna be focused in Mexico, just keep uh, just uh, keep in mind that um, this is like the model of intervention intervention that we at Rainforest Alliance we have uh, worldwide. So uh, next uh, slide, please. So uh, we're going to uh, be talking about uh, three topics uh, most. Uh, what is the Rainforest Alliance? What's uh, our impact and strategy in Mexico? And some examples of climate smart agriculture and resp responsible sourcing here in Mexico. Well, 
What's uh, the Rainforest Alliance? The Rainforest Alliance is a non-profit organization. Uh, we have presence in over a little bit more than 90 uh, countries uh, around the globe. Uh, oh, uh, of course, Latin America, it's one of our um, uh, areas of, of intervention in where we work in, in countries like uh, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Colombia, Peru, um, Ecuador, uh, Brazil, and uh, among, among others. The main of, uh, goal or, or the main objective of, of the Rainforest Alliance is um, the conservation and preservation of natural resources, its biodiversity, and um, the environmental services. But we, we, but we uh, at the Rainforest Alliance, we do this in, in a different way. Um, we are doing doing it by creating a more sustainable world by using social and market for, uh, forces to uh, protect these natural and uh, natural resources and improve um, the lives of farmers and foresters. Um, in a little bit uh, in difference from uh, other um, organizations that are uh, focused on, on, on the conservation of natural resources, we at the Rainforest Alliance, we work in, in uh, at the value chain levels. We, we, we work from, from the smallholders in, in the field, from all, uh, all the all the different steps that are uh, uh, composing a, a, a value chain until we we get to work to with um, with companies and uh, the, the 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 consumers. Next one, please. Uh, we have um, since two thousand and seventeen. Uh, we started uh, developing a new worldwide uh, strategy in where uh, you, when now you can see the four main pillars that we have in, in this stra uh, strategy. Uh, we have two um, core inter intervention, uh, intervention pillars and, though, and two, su uh, two support inter intervention pillars. These ones are the landscapes and communities, reimagining certification, advocacy, and tailored supply chain uh, services. When um, I don't know if, if everyone uh, it's aware, but the Rainforest Alliance, we merged with um, an, an, another NG, an NGO that it's based in, in Amsterdam, that it is called uh, OOTS. Uh, and we just realized that we were making um, very uh, similar works uh, at the same times in the same landscapes. So we decided to, to, to merge in 2017. So that's um, one of, uh, of the most uh, important programs for uh, both organizations, uh, uh, Rainforest Alliance and UTS at that time, it was a certification. Now uh, it is it's still one of our priorities, as you as you can see, as, as it is one of our core pillars, and we are um, working on this, uh, or we have been working for the last two years in this uh, reimagining certification for different commodities and and um, and products. Uh, last month we just launched our new certification uh, standard that is, uh, it's gonna come, it has come alive, but it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna start implementing this new uh, certification standard as per uh, August in 2021. Uh, landscapes and communities, it is very important for us because um, we at the Rainforest Alliance, we work with a landscape approach, which means that uh, we work with all those, uh, all the different productive activities that are happening at the landscape level. So maybe in one, in one landscape, we have agriculture and we have ranching and we have tourism and we have a, a community-based forestry, but also we maybe we would have a agro, agroforestry systems. So the importance of the importance of working on at this landscape uh, level is that we are working with all these uh, productive activities, and we are trying to transform them and migrate them from non-sustainable activities to sustainable activities. So and and in that way we are trying to reduce deforestation, degradation, and the uh, and, and and climate change. 
Uh, other part, other important part is advocacy. The, all the the work that we are doing on advocacy, it is not only related with uh, national or subnational governments, but also the the lobbying or advocacy that we do with um, with companies uh, mainly. And then uh, tailor supply chains. This is a, a very interesting uh, part of of our work because in this uh, in in this little part, what we are trying trying to do it is we are trying to uh, change the the supply chains of um, of companies of companies of different sizes companies uh, such as uh, mexican companies or companies uh, uh, such as international companies as unilever, unilever or uh, or nestle greg is going to be talking a little bit more about uh, this a little bit further uh, please the next one Uh, well, we, we are we are um, working to attack all these uh, main four uh, uh, issues around uh, communities uh, worldwide, not not only in Mexico. We are trying to, with the work that that we are uh, doing at, at, at the landscape level, we are imp we are having impacts on rural poverty, on human rights uh, violations, on climate. Uh, climate change and climate crisis, and uh, of course, a, a deforestation and degradation of, of forest and, and uh, rainforest around, around uh, the country. Next one, please. Well, here, um, uh, we were talking about the, our certification program. Our certification program, as, as I was saying, it's just a, a part of all the work that we are doing, but it's uh, um, um, a branch or, or of, of, of the work that we do uh, in, at the Rainforest Alliance. For us, certi uh, certification it is very important because within our standard, we are uh, tackling different, um, different issues like uh, things related with biodiversity, with uh, natural resources, with um, uh, management uh, of, of water, or also we are uh, tackling issues like um, child labor, forced labor, minimum wages, living wages, etc. So this, these ones are some uh, uh, important commodities that we are uh, certificating all over all over the world. But in Mexico, we are focused on uh, mainly on coffee, cocoa, cocoa, forced products, fruits and, and juices, and um, uh, vegetables. The next one, please. So this is a little about our tool um, reach, uh, uh, getting together the, the two different uh, certification programs, Rainforest Alliance and on and Wood Certified. That, that uh, as I was saying, they are becoming uh, they just become one since uh, last month. Uh, we are reaching over uh, two million farmers around the world. We, are, we have a, a little bit over 5 million hectares of land uh, of land and farms um, certificated on different commodities and on, on forestry. And as uh, I was saying, um, we are a, a bit uh, more, we work, we have impact in on a little bit more over 72 countries, but we have a uh, um, presence on uh, a little bit more over uh, 90 countries around the world. Next one, please. So um, our uh, global reach, uh, we were we were talking about um, the importance of, uh, the importance of having these alliances with different uh, companies of different sizes, uh, even even they they are or local, regional, uh, national, or international companies. In 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 this sense, uh, at the Rainforest Alliance, we have an alliance with over a little bit more than 450 different companies uh, all over the world, and um, I, as you as you can see, we have we have uh, over we we have over um, maybe five thousand five thousand different uh, 
products that are being certified by the Rainforest Alliance that you can find in different supermarkets or in markets or uh, or, or um, whatever. So uh, this is uh, very important because uh, and what we are trying to do not only in in Mexico but uh, as as an organization it is we are having very heavy communication uh, campaigns so final consumers can uh, understand what's behind the certification seal that you can find in, in 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 different products this is very very important for us because in that way consumers we're going to be able to uh, make a differ differentiation between having a cup of coffee that it is certificated or having a cup of, a cup of coffee that it is not so that's why we are investing a lot on these communication uh, campaigns and also um, for developing like domestic uh, domestic markets like we are doing in, in in Mexico now in Mexico we cannot find a lot of uh, certificated products but we are working towards uh, towards uh, this and we are trying to um have more much more certificated uh, products and these campaigns on how uh, consumers we can understand what's behind all the, uh, and the, the work uh, on the certification seal uh, next one uh, please So now we're gonna we're gonna run a three minute um, a video that you can find uh, also uh, in, in YouTube, and it is um, it is related with one of our campaigns that it is called Follow the Frog. This com this communication campaign takes place every September. So we are very close from from this uh, from this uh, year's campaign. So uh, I would like you to see this this video. You are a good person. You spend time with your family. You work out at the gym. Come on, push, push. You conserve water while showering. You like nice clothes. You give to charity. You recycle. You drive a Prius, but you use your bike when you can. You enjoy the occasional distraction at work. And you always send a card on Mother's Day. Always. But there's a part of you that tells yourself that you're not so good, that you could be doing more, that the world is falling apart at the seams, and all you've been doing is yoga. One day, you see that the rainforest is being destroyed at a staggering rate of 32 million acres a year. That's the equivalent of one football field every 78 seconds. You feel bad, angry, guilty. You've been apathetic for too long. You want to do something about it. You must do something about it. Well, this is what you're not going to do. You're not going to quit your job, leave your family, get on the next flight to Nicaragua, take a bus to the edge of the jungle, then hoof it across rivers, lakes, and streams on a quest to the very heart of the rainforest. Take me to the heart of the rainforest. You're getting closer. You're almost there. You have arrived. You're not going to ingratiate yourself with the local tribesmen, go to great lengths to earn their respect and trust. No, 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 no! It is around now you realize you're living out the cliché gringo fantasy of becoming an honorary native and leading the resistant forces. But screw it. If they could do it, so can you. I'm gonna save you! This guy comes over here, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pull a zap thing, that's right through him, right over here. You're not gonna coordinate and occupy the rainforest movement, realize it's hopeless, summon the power of the gods, lead a revolution against the deforesters and their multinational employers in an apocalyptic once and for all battle to save humanity only to awaken two days later in an El Salvadorian hospital with two toes missing on your left foot Syria, I want to go home. hobble out of Central America up through Mexico across the Sierra Madre where you break down have your first cigarette in four years accidentally start a wildfire killing off the endangered species that once served as your occupational distraction finally make it back home only to find you've been replaced at work by a guy named TJ and that things at home are not what they used to be. You're not going to do any of these things, but what you can do is follow the frog. Buy 
Buying Rainforest Alliance certified products ensures the future of our rainforests so that you don't have to do the things you shouldn't do anyway. Just follow the frog. Thank you very much. So as you can see, uh, I think that the, the, the main um, message within this, uh, this video, it's two specific things. It's how we can help on changing the um, uh, value chains and how we can help companies to change their supply chains. So that's what we are doing at the Rainforest Alliance in Mexico. We are working with, um, with smallholders, coffee, cocoa, timber and non-timber forest products, tourism, agroforestry, to um, start uh, changing these uh, value chains. And we are working with companies to help them in changing their uh, supply chains. So I'm going to leave um, the, the rest of, of the presentation to my, to my colleague, Gregoire Abadi. So please, uh, Greg, just um, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Edgar. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the, the video and, and got all the information uh, for now. So we're going to keep going with the, with the presentation. Um, so um, as Edgar already said, well, uh, since uh, 2018, we, we've merged with Woods, another certification. And now, uh, like one month ago, we, we released the, the new certification program, uh, which is a really ambitious one and, and tackles a lot of main issues, like we said. Um, but it's not the, the main um, focus for this for this meeting hoy. So uh, today, sorry. So we we're gonna we're gonna keep on going with, with, with the rest of the information. And feel free to to go to our website or YouTube, uh, Instagram. We, we put a lot of information for for everyone. Um, this is like a video you can find on YouTube. I'm not gonna put it now, uh, so it's not uh, to not bore you. But but uh, it explains quite simply what is new on this on this certification program and, and the main uh, issues that, that has been tackled. So feel free to, to go on YouTube and, and see this video and all the other video that explains a lot of um, you know, program we, we, are, we are doing. Um, so we're going to talk now about uh, our impact and strategy in, in, in Mexico. And, and I see in the chat that a lot of people is, 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 come, is from Mexico, uh, Michoacan, um, Tamaulipas. Um, so in Mexico, we are working here since 1991, and we started in the state of Oaxaca, which is here. I don't know if you see my mouse, but this is the state of Oaxaca in, in Mexico for the one that, that, that don't know. And uh, well, you can see the four main um, products we are managing here in the country. So first, the coffee um, here in the states of, of Oaxaca and Chiapas is a really important commodity for, for us worldwide, but also in Mexico. Mexico is a, is a great producer of coffee and, and, and produce a lot of organic coffee. So we are helping uh, communities there in, in, in implementing good practices. Uh, also, we are working with cocoa uh, in the state of Chiapas here in Tabasco um, with timber, sustainable uh, forest management um, for um, timber, timber species, uh, for temple species, I mean, like pines or oaks in the state of Oaxaca. But but um, uh, also tropical wood in the states of um, Campeche and Quintana Roo in the, in the Yucatan Peninsula. So this is a really interesting work. And finally, we are working with fruits and vegetable producers in the state of Jalisco with avocados, in the state of Oaxaca with mangoes, and uh, with vegetables producers in the south of the Mexico City in the Chinampas, which is a really ancient uh, way of producing vegetables. So also this is... A really, really interesting job. So these are the four main uh, products we are we are managing here in in Mexico since 1991. Um, the next one, well, um, as Ed Edgar mentioned, we are we are doing a global approach um, in our work, and and here in in Mexico we work through many projects. Uh, for example, you see on the left side uh, the donors we work with. The World Bank, you say, the Walmart, the Kellogg Foundation, Tinker Foundation, Fundación Gigante, which is a Mexican foundation. And every project uh, have one or many focuses, for example, deforestation, 
climate change adaptation, indigenous people, business capacities, uh, tourism, youth empowerment, women empowerment, gender equity. It's, it's really a global approach in, in the project and it's really, really interesting. And, and we try to work with everyone involved in the chain of production, producers, companies, and, and government. So, so yes, we try to make the, the, more, the most global approach possible. Um, for example, with producers, well, we, we make a lot of workshop and, and capacities. Uh, for example, with Climate Smart Agriculture. Climate Smart Agriculture is um, aimed to try to combat climate change or to adapt the production under the, the climate change. For example, we, we've made a, a study in the states of, of Chiapas and, and Tabasco around the coffee and cocoa production. And we saw that uh, because of the of the climate change, um, some of the of the rural areas wouldn't be able to produce any fruits, any cocoa or any coffee in, in in the following years if the producers don't start to implement these climate smart agricultural practices. We also capacitate them on agroecological and good practices, um, business capacities, for example. Um, with the with the timber producer, they don't know, for example, how much it costs to produce uh, one table of one table of wood. So we are helping them on the whole chain of production to evaluate uh, the cost production. So this kind of stuff or financial capacities. Um, for example, with mango producers in Oaxaca, um, they were selling uh, products on on the side of the road, and they didn't have a bank account. They didn't. Uh, they weren't uh, like. Um, registered on the um, on the finance institution, the SAT in, in in Mexico. So we are helping also them to be like a more a more formal uh, production, um, more formal producers. So this helps them in in every in every way. Uh, for example, with companies, well, we support them on their marketing and communication uh, around the certification because because some companies they buy certified products, but they don't really know what's behind that. So for example, in, the, in, this, in this picture on the left, it's uh, on the highway of, of Mexico City, and it's a big uh, publicity campaign for 7-Eleven uh, last year, where they sold, I think, for three or four months uh, certified coffee in, in, their, in, their, in their shops. And also, maybe you don't know um, the company, it's called Krispy Kreme, it's a big donuts company. And here in Mexico is quite important. And, and, and for the Mexican folks here, maybe you don't know, but the coffee sold selling in, in, in Krispy Kreme is, is coming from certified farms. So whole, the whole coffee in, in Mexico is, is certified coffee. And, and we try to, to broaden this, this communication because uh, many people don't know it, but we are, we are working on that. Um, we are also trying to make direct relations with, with producers and uh, making the intermediary in, in, in the relation, like if there is a big company like Precious Wood, which is a, a, a huge tropical wood trader, we are doing the, the real, we have a really good relations with the communities in the Yucatan Peninsula, for example. So we are making the work of the intermediary here and, 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 and facilitate the communication between the, between the two parts. And on the left, these are, these are other tools we use. To, to guide companies. For example, the accountability framework is really useful for, for big companies that already have a commitment to sustainability, but they want to go further. Well, this, there is a huge framework there and, and we can guide them uh, to go further in their commitment to, to, to ethical supply chains. So this is a really great tool. The other one here is Landscale, which is a global program uh, implemented by the Rainforest Alliance at the global scale. And one of the the main countries is Mexico, and this is a tool to um, for the companies to to measure their impact in in the landscape that they are working. For example, in, in Jalisco, if you are a company that's producing berries, well, what's the impact on water, on on carbon emissions? Like this kind of of tools to to help them to measure the um, their impact on the whole landscape. And finally, the markets for a sustainable future. It's a Mexican initiative we, we developed with, with the with the team here, and I will talk a little bit uh, further in, in the presentation. And uh, finally, with the governments, we are also trying to make uh, impact with the inst in, with institutional relations. Uh, for example, we we have uh, generally we we firm we sign collaboration agreements. 
for example, with the state of Quintana Roo, Jalisco, Jalisco. Uh, for example, in Quintana Roo, it's, it's really to, to promote the use of, of sustainable forest management. Um, also with, with cities, for example, in, in Villa Flores, in Chiapas, with, uh, we train with the, with, the, with the city to implement good practices in the coffee production. Also, we are, we are signing with federal programs like Sembrando Vida, which is a huge um, program from the government. And in this case, we are trying to help them to implement um, sustainable practices uh, in the program. And finally, with federal institutions like the FND, which is they give credits to producers in the whole country and, and they want to make um, a specific fund allowed it to allow to, um, to sustainable productions. So we are also trying to make this impact through private sector, government and, and companies. So this is quite interesting. And, and now I'm going to talk a little bit further about this, this initiative we, we've launched last year, which is called Markets for a Sustainable Future. So it's, it's a Mexican um, initiative we, we launched last year, like I said. And we are trying to gather everyone, um, everyone in, the, in the value production, starting with the communities and producers, then the industry of transformation, the companies, and finally the consumer. And um, we are trying to gather all of these uh, actors under uh, our website, which is called mercadosporunfuturosostenible.org. And, and there um, we have a directory of products uh, that we, we are sure that they are sustainable. For example, honey producers or um, meat producers in the Yucatan Peninsula or the certified coffee or or small producers that are doing a really good a good job on the field and, and, and producing a really good coffee under sustainable practices well we are we are putting them on the, on this website and we want to offer to the mexican consumer uh, the options to change the consumer to a sustainable one and we are trying to gather companies that want to start selling these kind of products and we are also working with other organizations that have this knowledge and can help us to, to capacitate more producers. And, and the objective of, of this, this initiative is to offer to the Mexican consumer more options on, on responsible uh, consuming. Um, and for that, uh, we have the website and we, also, we, we launch also this communication campaign, which is called Conoce, Cambia, Comparte. In English, it's um, Know, Change and Share. And, and it's the path to, to a, a responsible consumer. First, you know the products that you are consuming. As a consumer, you start looking for information and you know which product is sustainable, which is not. And then you can start um, changing your, your, um, your, your purchases. So that's the second part of Cambia, which is change in English. And, and you can switch to a more sustainable more responsible consuming and 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 now we are start now we are actually um consuming um responsible products when you have to share it and and this is the last part the comparte the share like you are doing uh, responsible consuming so you can share it on uh, social media and with your friends your family and saying oh yeah look I, i've bought this this new coffee it's it's uh, coming from the the, um, the Sierra of Chiapas and, and yeah, or you can uh, switch to the FSC certified paper products, for example. And, and you can find this, this campaign in the, in the social media of Rainforest Alliance Mexico, in our Instagram, in our Facebook, and in, in our Twitter. And um, we've worked with Eli Eli Elustra. It's, 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 um, it's a, a girl, an illustrator, Mexican girl. And she helped us to draw this illustration that's quite cool and really simple and talk uh, to the consumer with uh, simple words and explaining um, what's behind every, every product. So I invite you to, to go and see um, this communication campaign on, on our uh, social media. And finally, I will give you uh, two examples of uh, what actually is being doing in, the, in our products. In our projects, I mean. So um, first, in the state of Chiapas, uh, so Chiapas in the southwest of southeast of, of, of Mexico, 
And uh, here on the right, you have all the donors involved in the, in the project, uh, the, the BID, the Inter-American um, World Bank, uh, the USAID, the, the um, Agency of International Development of the, of the US, and Fundación Gigante, which is a, a Mexican foundation. So they've, they helped us with, with, with the money. And uh, in the state of Chiapas, we are working with Takana producers. It's like um, 150 small producers in the state of, of Chiapas, and they are producing coffee on, on, the, um, on the back of the volcan Takana. There's a volcano there um, close to the frontier with Guatemala, and there is a huge volcano there, and they are producing the coffee, the coffee on, the, yeah, on, on, the, on, on, the, on the volcano. And um, we are helping them um, on, on good practices and, um, and sustainable production. Uh, also, in, in, in the hand with the, the government, the CONAMP is the, the, the National uh, Protected Area uh, Commission. And the Takana producers, they are, they are in, the, in a protected area. So we are working in the, with, in the end with the, with the CONAMP. And they sold the coffee to TOX. And Tox is a restaurant chain in, in Mexico, a big one. And 100% um, and, and of the coffee uh, served in Tox is coming from these small holders. And, and now the next step is that uh, these producers are being certified under the Rainforest Alliance certification. And really soon for the, the Mexican folks here in, in, in the chat, uh, you, will, you will have the, the chance to, to have certified coffee from, uh, in every Tox restaurant. And we hope you can, this can start uh, the end of 2020 or maybe 2021, start of 2021. So this is an example where we work with producers, with company, with the government, and with our um, Rainforest Alliance, obviously, and with other, other organizations. So this is one clear example of what we've been doing uh, in the state of Chiapas, now in the state of, of Oaxaca. Um, this, this project is called Inclusive Agriculture, where we, where we gather also a lot of women, uh, especially in the state of Oaxaca, in the, in the mango production. Um, so yeah, we've been working there with, I think, more than 100 producers. And there's a, there's a really cool video on YouTube that explains all the, the whole project. And uh, we've been capacitating them uh, on business and climate smart agriculture practices. Um, this was the, 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 the producers I was, I was talking about. They were selling um, on the side of the road and they didn't have any bank account or like a formal um, producer. So we've, we helped them in every, every one of these aspects. And, on, and after the first year of production, they were able to sell to Humex, which is a huge uh, juice uh, company in Mexico. And now in the second phase, they sold their mango uh, as a fruit, not as a juice, but as a fruit to Walmart. And, and here in the Mexico City, we had the chance to, to have these this, uh, particular mangoes from these producers in some of the Superama uh, supermarkets and in some of the Walmart supermarkets. And now the next step is to being certified. I don't know. And uh, under the, this producer will be certified under the Rainforest Alliance certification. And this will help them to, to aim to international markets. Um, also in the Mexico City area, in the south, in the Xochimilco area, we are working with vegetables producers in the Chinampas, which, which is the, the ancient way of producing I was talking about at the beginning. And in the same way, we have them in climate smart agricultural practices and business practices. And the last year, well, not this year, uh, but we, we've been in touch with LSG, LSG Skychefs. LSG Skychefs is a huge company that um, is doing the whole catering for 17 international airlines in Mexico. So they're making basically 10,000 uh, meals a day. And, um, and they were really interesting in start working with, with these producers and, and buy directly to them. Unfortunately, well, the COVID came and, and the airlines were really impacted. So this is in kind of uh, paused now, but um, the interest is still on, and and soon um, the salads from 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 Sochimilco uh, will be eaten in the flights to France, to Holland, to Japan, to Turkey. Um, so this is really really exciting 
project. And, and yes, basically that, that was the, the two examples I wanted to, to give you. And um, thank you for, for your attention. I hope it was clear. Uh, I hope it was interesting. And, and now I will be happy to, to answer um, any question you, you could have. And, and again, thank you very much for, for your attention. And um, to have the pleasure to share with such an incredible companies, organization like Rainforest Alliance, we, uh, well, in Isam, we stand out with the same vision, create value, create a better world, right? Uh, as Gregor says, said, it's all about to know, which is education, then consume and share. And with the sharing, if, if we collaborate as a unity, we can all level up together and create a better world. And we want to create leaders in the agriculture sector. So now we are going to start with the questions. If someone wants to write down more questions, feel free. Now I'm going to post the first question. And I hope Gregor or Edgar can answer you guys. Sorry. Okay. Can you see it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here. Oh, sorry, sorry. That was sad. Oh. No. Okay. Michael says, I'm not clear on what the criteria are for a product which has the RA certification. For example, what metrics are used to verify uh, that an RA cup of coffee is worth the premium for the certification? Is there a life cycle analysis or something similar that is performed to quantify the sustainability claims? Thank you, thank you, Michael, for 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 this um, question. And yes, as we were as we were saying, we have we have um, um, certification standard. That certification in that certification standard, there's like um, three main components. Obviously, the uh, natural resources com uh, component the uh, community's well-being component or a social component and the economic one on each of these um, components uh, we have uh, over um, 217 if I'm if I'm right different uh, criteria that are um, that are, that makes uh, these uh, that are composing this this certification uh, uh, standard, and uh, each um, farm or small hold, small holder, they have to, to fulfill all these all, all these uh, criteria, so all, all these uh, indicators stated in in our certification standard to get or to access these um, these uh, certificates so um, this is it is it is very uh, interesting because our, our certification uh, model it is uh, it is related with a continuous improvement of of sustainability actions within the farm or or or, or the, the, the smallholder uh, land so each uh, each year after a, a smallholder or a farm uh, gets the the certification they are going to have they're going to be having these audits this uh, um, periodically audits that are going to be uh, reviewing that all the uh, indicators indicators are, and criteria that are stated in our certification uh, standard are for, are uh, fulfilled and in that way they can they can keep uh, maintaining the, the the certification so um i don't know michael if if with this i'm uh, answering your your question
sorry, now you can hear me. Um, well, Michael, let us know if that was uh, good for you and you can text us and we are gonna pass with the second question. Okay, um, I'm gonna translate the question because I know we have non-Spanish non speaking, so I'm gonna try. Well, um, it's clear that you support that you support producers while generations they have possessed lands, including a small agricultures. But what about the young professionals or the young students who wants to start a business and, and also make it a way of life? How do you support this? How do you support small students, a, a small, not small, I'm sorry, young professionals who wants to start up, a, to start with a new company or get involved in people? Thank you, thank you, Andrea, and thank you, uh, Miriam, for for this, que this this question. It is it is very um, it's very interesting, and it is very important to to talk about youth, youth in uh, in the farms, youth in the field, because um, uh, for those that are not um, uh, based in 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 Mexico. Uh, land tenure uh, in in Mexico it's quite um, it's quite complicated because um, almost around 65 percent of natural resources are owned by ejidos or, or, or comunidades that are that we we say that they are, that they are uh, on, so, on on their social pr uh, property so um, under this um, land tenure uh, uh, way of organization, uh, youth are not entitled to uh, to have uh, rights on, on, on the land. So in that in that way, um, we have been working for the last uh, around six years on um, a program that is developing a, a, or, or or capacity building program uh, in the area of of Calakmul and, and the Yucatan Peninsula, in where we are working specifically with with you with uh, with youth. We are uh, training them on on different topics, specific uh, uh, from from agriculture to climate change, et cetera, and uh, with the help of um, Kellogg Foundation, we are um, uh, working together and we are, we are um, sending these, uh, these kids and, and these uh, uh, youth to, uh, to universities such as the Earth University in, in Costa Rica, but also we have been working a lot on the development of different um, um, topics in with um, a, a, a high school and a an university in this area of of Calakmul, in where we are working on a sustainable a sustainability a careers and a forest management careers. So for us as an organization, it is very very important to incorporate youth into 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 the work that that, that we are doing because i don't know uh, but uh, in in mexico um the the work on agriculture is always related with uh people that are over 65 years old maybe so we are trying to uh, develop that, that interest in, on, on youth so they can keep working on 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 agriculture on agroforestry on forestry etc <clears throat> Okay, thank you very much, Edgar. We are we have another question from Pedro. Here we are. Okay. Do you have 
in your certification program some rules to follow by the producers about pesticides residue in the in the different crops Yes, actually we do. Uh, as part of our certification program, we have like these um, documents uh, that are uh, giving um, support to the to the certification standard. And within these documents, we have a very extensive document that is related with um, all these um, pesticides, agrochemicals and other uh, chemicals that are prohibited to 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 use in 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 the fields on, or 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 in the crops that are uh, reinforced and certified so maybe uh, we can uh, we can we can share these these documents with with you they they are they are uh, open to public to public you can find them on uh, our uh, uh, website but yes, do, we we do have uh, those 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 kind of restrictions for 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 for, for pesticides or chemicals or or, or these these kind of, of, of chemicals. Thank you. Um, we have Michael texting. Let's see if he has another question. Let's wait a little bit. And, I, and put the, I put the link to the to the new program, so you can you can go on the website and see all the um, all the criteria, all the all the program actually, and you can revise what it's um, what you are what the producers are are committed to, and what the companies are are committed to. But because we are so certifying uh, not just the producers, but also the the supply chain of the companies. For example, if you are a company selling coffee and you are a roaster. Um, if you buy um, certified coffee, well, you have to certify your your roasting area, the the roasting um, path, and um, and everything in the process to be able to sell the product uh, uh, with the with the Rainforest Alliance seal. So we are just to mention that we're certifying the producers, but also the supply chain of the companies, and every every um, all of this information is available. Uh, to everyone on the on the website and on the last link I, I just put it in the, in the chat. Thank you, Gregor. And this is a great opportunity, guys, to get connected. So um, Gregor and Edgar as well can type their full name, and you can also find them on LinkedIn. And it's nice to 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 build a, a community, right? Um, now we have. I'm gonna publish this one. Before we finish, um, here. And thank you, Pedro, for your question. Okay. Michael says, thank you, Edgar and Gregor. I think it will be helpful if the impacts of the certification were measured. For example, RA certified farms have X percentage, more biodiversity percentage, better access to education and percentage less poverty than non-certified farms to touch on the environmental, social and economic points. I saw this with an oat milk level and thought it was a compelling argument to buy that product. I will follow up on that link. Thanks. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, Michael. It's it's very it's very true, and it is very interesting what you're saying, and that's uh, uh, what we are uh, trying to 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 do within within RA for for the for the becoming years. For us, it is very important to have those specific raw numbers, uh, to, so we can we can so we can measure how uh, sustainable a farm. Uh, it is, and and it, it, it is not only related with with the sustainability of the farm, but it is related with the impacts on being certified uh, that we are having on those specific farm and uh, the owners on, of the farm and all the smallholders are surrounding that uh, those uh, certificate certificate. Um, um, 
uh, farms. So we are working we, we are working on on it, uh, and maybe uh, there's uh, we, we can share. I, I don't have it right now, but there's like. Um, um, a study that we did, like about an article that we wrote about uh, two or three years ago. It, it, you can find it in our web page, and it is talking about all these all these um, uh, issues that 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 you are that you are talking about. For example, in in Mexico, what we are trying to do and what we are going to start uh, piloting, it's gonna we're going to start piloting uh, uh, biodiversity on certif certificate uh, farms. We're going to start putting these uh, cameras on specific um, specific uh, points of, of, of the of the farms, and we are going to start measuring uh, uh, how bi uh, biodiversity if biodiversity is increasing. If if, if, if it's not, uh, etc. So I think that it is. It's a very good uh, uh, comment, and uh, just um, be sure that we, we, as an organization, we are working towards towards uh, this. Thank you so much, Edgar. So uh, if well, I. I think we don't have any other question. Um, I want to thank you guys, Edgar and Gregor. It's a, a, it's a pleasure to have you here. And we really appreciate how you share your values, how you share the great positive impact that you are doing with Rainforest Alliances. And as I said before, it's really good to, to unify our visions, our goals, as a community, and I know you all wants to have a good impact in the world and a really good impact in your countries. We have a lot of people from LATAM, Europe, rest of the world, and we want to create and share better values. So let's get connected, and I see you guys in the next webinar. Thank you for your time. I hope to see you all uh, in our series. We have series webinar, and you can find the upcoming webinars in our web page. So thank you so much. Thank you again, Edgar and Gregor. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.